How are you? Today we're going to take a viscous fluid sim, add in some volume noise and create a crawling ooze effect in Houdini. I'm Kev Ryan and here we go. So we have a basic setup here for a fluid simulation. I'm just rotating this pig head so the emitter has a different shape each frame, which is now our flip source. I've added a viscosity attribute with an attribute noise, which I'm remapping here with this attribute wrangle. I'm also adding this ramp attribute that we can use to color our particles after we've cached our sim. Inside the DOP, I've deactivated our source after frame 72. I disabled receding and enabled viscosity by attribute. Pretty simple. However, you'll find that no matter what sort of randomness you have on your emitter, viscous fluid sims always seem to resolve into this blobby puddle shape. So what we need to do is to introduce some additional forces into our simulation to try and break up this rounded leading edge. We can do this by creating a pop advect by volumes and placing it after our volume source and selecting its velocity source as being our fourth context geometry. So what that means is that if we plug in any velocity field into the fourth input of our DOP network, we should see a take effect right away. So to do this, I'm going to create a box, the size of which will represent our velocity field. It should be big enough to encapsulate your entire fluid sim on the surface. Then we're going to copy the Y dimension of the size, paste with relative references into the center and divide by two. So what we're trying to do here is to make sure that the size of the box covers the ultimate height of the fluid as it's on the surface. Also, one thing I like to do is just take away 0.1 from this expression, just so that it sits just below the fluid. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a volume and connect it after the box. We'll set its rank to be vector and we'll name it vel. And give it more uniform sampling divisions. So we're going to give this volume a value of 5 in the x axis. And then we're going to plug it into the fourth context geometry of the DOP network, which will feed it into our pop advect by volumes. This will advect our particles along the x axis, which looks something like this. So now that we have a velocity field that works, we can start experimenting with the values in this field. And I'm going to do this by first creating a volume VOP. Plug it into here and we're going to jump in. So the first thing we're going to do is delete this output because we're not going to be working with density. So we're going to put in a curl noise and then connect up to the position. And then we're going to create a bind export. We'll connect the curl noise to the input, change the name to vel and change the type to tree floats. So now we have this curl noise volume that's going to introduce a whole bunch of additional velocities into our simulation. Before I go any further, I'm going to promote some parameters on this curl noise and add in some more frequency. I'm also going to increase the velocity on the advection, which looks something like this. So we can clearly see that the curl noise is doing its job of breaking up the leading edges of our sim. So one change I'd like to make is to stop the curl noise from advecting particles in the Y axis. So what I'm going to do here is add in a vector to float, connect it up and then a float to vector. And only connect these together on the X and Z axes. So that way we should only get lateral movement on our particles on the surface. And if we simulated and rendered that, it should look something like this. So that works just fine. However, it doesn't really have that undulating quality that we're after. So to get that, we're going to have to introduce some movement into our noise field. And we'll do that by adding a little time. So we're going to have to delete the curl noise that we already have, which is three dimensional. Put in another curl noise, link it up. And then rather than connecting our position directly in, we're going to split it up with a vector to float and then feed this split vector into a float to vector four. Connect each of these up. Then if we connect this output, which is now a quaternion, into the position, you'll see that it has four dimensions. 
And what can we put into this fourth dimension? Well, we can put in the time. And before we leave, we may as well promote these parameters as well. So now at this top level, if we move our time slider, you should see the noise moving as well. This should give us some more interesting results in our simulations. However, it's moving a bit too quickly for my liking. So I'm just going to add in a multiply, put it here, promote the parameter, double click, bring this down, and now we can give this a name. So I'm going to call it time mult. Actually, now it's not moving because it's at zero. So if we set this to point 0.1, it starts to move, albeit quite slowly. Then I'm going to put in my values from before. Actually, that one's irrelevant. Now, if you were to run this simulation and render it, it would look something like this. Then, if you wanted to further move things along, you could put an expression into the offset. You could lower your max viscosity to 25. You could also reconnect the y-axis of your curl noise back up again, which looks something like this. Then to finish up, if you wanted, you can add in as many additional velocities as you want on the top. Play around with the slip on collision on the viscosity, add in some velocity here, and you can get something pretty cool and pretty gross. Thanks for watching and have a very happy Halloween. Mind yourself.